Amazon has been blamed for unfair business practices and bait-and-switch marketing tactics. The results of these lawsuits might be devastating for the company that does not have a great year and, as we showed you in the previous video, is collapsing day by day. Two class action lawsuits might require the platform to reimburse thousands of Prime users and pay billions of dollars. But that's only the beginning. In one lawsuit, it is claimed that Amazon engaged in unfair business practices by refusing to lower the price of its Prime subscription or issue refunds after stopping free Whole Foods delivery. The lawsuit was filed in a Washington court in late May. According to the lawsuit's contents, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of subscribers to Amazon Prime registered for a subscription in order to benefit from the club's complimentary Whole Foods delivery service. Customers paid $119 for a service that was unjustly cancelled as a result of Amazon's dishonest business practices. Members of Prime did not profit from their membership deal. Amazon is charged with deceiving customers in a second-class action lawsuit filed in the same court in June. The lawsuit asserts that the firm misrepresented its free delivery and free two-hour grocery delivery services. The lawsuit claims that Amazon deceived customers by drip pricing, a technique of hiding some product expenses until after the transaction is complete. According to the second case, Amazon uses a bait-and-switch marketing tactic by failing to disclose the $9.95 service charge in addition to the listed price of the Whole Foods grocery goods. Amazon offers Whole Foods items at a specific price before imposing an additional service fee after the customer has already started the ordering process. Customers claim they were coerced into overpaying for Prime subscriptions in both instances. In February 2018, Amazon began offering free two-hour delivery for Prime subscribers on food purchases over $35. Whole Foods was acquired by Amazon in June 2017. Analysts hailed the decision as a method for the business to keep clients in the fiercely competitive supermarket sector. In April of that year, Amazon increased the cost of Prime memberships for just the second time ever and the first time in four years, going from $99 to $119 annually. But after adding a $9.95 service charge to replace the free Whole Foods delivery in September, the business could have decided to take on too much. Plaintiffs contend that by enacting the price increase, Amazon violated Washington State's Consumer Protection Act by failing to deliver all the benefits promised by its $119 subscription. Customers who had utilized Prime services at least once throughout the course of their yearly subscription, according to the lawsuit, were not eligible for any kind of reimbursement upon termination. The lawsuit claims that Amazon has indulged in unfair business practices, broken its duty of good faith, and denied Prime members the advantages of their agreement. However, Amazon has increased pricing from $119 to $139 for the third time. The second class action lawsuit is anticipated to be sparked by the price rise, which took effect for existing Prime users on March the 25th. The second lawsuit claims that false advertisements appeared in print, on television, and on Amazon's website, promising free delivery and free two-hour groceries delivery, while concealing a $9.95 service charge at the end of the shopping process. Additionally, it asserts that Amazon failed to explain to customers how to avoid the automatic $5 tip that is included in grocery orders. The complaint stated that customers would have wanted to know that Amazon collects a service fee in link with grocery delivery from Whole Foods Market, just like any reasonable person. And this knowledge would have influenced their, as well as many other rational buyers, decision to buy a Prime membership. The more recent class action lawsuit, in contrast to the one filed in May, may cover Prime subscribers who joined up for the service after complimentary Whole Foods delivery was discontinued. That's because the first lawsuit just asserts that Amazon breached its commitment to consumers. It makes no charge of misleading advertising. The second lawsuit, however, contends that the guarantee was false in that it allowed for the participation of newer clients. In another lawsuit, Amazon is being sued in California on the grounds that it failed to reimburse workers for internet, mobile phone, as well as other home office expenditures, even though they were compelled to do so according to the COVID-19 legislation. David Williams, an Amazon employee, alleges in the case that the business violated a state statute mandating payment for work-related expenditures by forcing him and other employees to work remotely using their personal phones, home internet, and electricity. Williams recently added class action complaints to the 2021 lawsuit on behalf of all Amazon workers in the state who were obliged to work from home during the epidemic, and the case was then moved to a federal court in California. 
Williams believes that in addition to paying for the techies' energy and internet costs at home, Amazon should also cover any additional costs associated with their temporary home offices during the epidemic. Williams filed a lawsuit against the cloud giant on behalf of himself and more than 4,000 California employees, distributed over 12 sites. He claims the fees will run between $50 and $100 per month during the period when they were advised to avoid business premises as the coronavirus spread. The plaintiff's lawsuit asserted that even utilizing the low end of his alleged range of damages, an estimated $50 per month per class member, placed more than $5 million in contention. The plaintiff claims that there are at least 4,200 participants in the proposed class and that each one is entitled to $50 for every month that they were employed by Amazon throughout the relevant period. Williams attorney Craig Ackerman of Ackerman & Teeler Jeff stated in an email that his company has brought identical actions against more than 20 businesses, including IBM Corp and Oracle Corp. According to Ackerman, a number of the cases have been resolved with companies agreeing to pay remote employees stipends of up to $83 per month. Additionally, his company filed a complaint against Fox Broadcasting Company last month, alleging that it did not pay the charges for the use of around 1,000 workers' personal devices and other equipment for work-related purposes. Fox has not yet addressed the allegations. IBM and Oracle have both denied misconduct. The Private Attorney General Act, a special California statute which enables employees to file lawsuits on the state's behalf and keep 25% of any judgments they win, was used to file both the Amazon and the Fox lawsuits. Because claims under the statute cannot be submitted to individual arbitration, several employees who have entered into dispute settlement with their employers are nonetheless permitted to file lawsuits in court on behalf of sizable numbers of workers. Williams added class action allegations to his updated case against Amazon, which may result in significantly worse fines than PAGA breaches. The attorneys for Amazon, however, contend that since the corporation was complying with instructions to remain at home, which mandate that employees avoid going to work, the bandwidth and power bills, as well as other such costs, are not their concern. Amazon claimed that the plaintiff's complaints are invalid because the law did not require it to pay back costs brought on by governmental policies. However, Vince Chabria, a U.S. federal district judge in Northern California, rejected Amazon's bid to dismiss the lawsuit and argued that the business is still potentially liable, despite the local government's directives. That's not all. A subscriber of Amazon Prime has submitted a potential class action in a federal court in New York, alleging that the online retailer tricked her into paying for unnecessary Audible memberships. According to the lawsuit, which was submitted to the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of New York, Amazon advertises access to complimentary Audible titles as a benefit of a Prime membership, only to surreptitiously sign up customers for a monthly subscription fee for the then difficult to cancel audiobook service. The lawsuit asserts, using posts on AmazonForum.com and Reddit, that there have been hundreds of complaints about this misleading advertising. The complaint claims that because Prime customers are unaware that they have signed up for an Audible membership, it may be months or even years before they learn they are being charged for the unnecessary service. According to the lawsuit, Amazon only offers partial reimbursements in response to customer complaints. Despite being a completely owned part of Amazon, Audible and Prime memberships are distinct. Audible subscription costs range from $8 to $23 a month, based on the extras included and how many credits are purchased. Tracy McCarthy, the plaintiff, claims that after purchasing a Prime subscription, she was then charged $14.95 a month, without her knowledge or consent, for a total of about $448.50 in charges. Well, that's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.